My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people make friends? I'm just trying to make a little money. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate, to teach. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. We got to stop fretting about how so much of our gains are concentrated in tech stocks and start thinking about why that's the case and how it may not be nearly as worrisome as you might think. Especially after a day where the Dow gained 224 points, S&P advanced 0.76%, tech laden NASDAQ jumped 1.12%. It was a wildly positive session that threatens to make the month of January a darn good one. That's right. I say that the market's concentration and fixation on tech's a lot less nefarious than you might believe. That's one of the reasons why we own the Super 6 for my charitable trust, meaning Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, Meta Platforms, and, of course, NVIDIA, which, by the way, is roaring after hours because of a fantastic set of numbers from Super Micro which if you stay tuned, you will hear from later. It will be a treat, but only if you're bullish. I'm also not panicked by the market's supposed lack of breath, because if I had sold out on this fear, I would have missed days like today. A day where interest rates fell dramatically after we learned that the government doesn't need to borrow as much money as we thought. That is terrific news, people, in a market where money managers are very worried about a potential tsunami of government bonds wiping them out. More importantly, I don't worry about the concentration of winners in tech because, alas, the concentration makes sense, and it does so in a really bullish way. See, rather than fearing the narrow breadth, you need to know why. It's the client, stupid. That's right. You need to start thinking about what a company makes and whom it makes it for. When we're dealing with tech, their products are largely made for what we call the enterprise, for businesses, not individuals. And the enterprise has a lot of money to spend. But if your clients are hostage to the consumer, you're struggling mightily to make the numbers. In other words, it's not about tech versus non-tech. It's about the enterprise versus the consumer. And I like that dichotomy. I want to start with the shop-worn Magnificent 7, the suddenly atavistic rubric for the winners in the market because Tesla no longer qualifies. We've always thought of Tesla as technology on wheels, a robot car. That's because Elon Musk taught us to think that way. He bridles when people call it a vehicle, which is a consumer product. That was fine as long as demand held up. Now the man's headed down, and it's no longer technology on wheels. It's a company that sells cars. Cars that are bought by stretched consumers who don't have enough money to afford them, especially because financing charges are so high. Let's go back to that miserable Tesla conference call last week, where Musk wouldn't admit that there are actual demand problems. It reminded me that when you're selling to the enterprise, you don't have to go on and on about affordability. You price your product, and it's usually take it or leave it. And if the product's any good, they take it, especially if you know how to sell. Not so the worried consumer. Tesla actually had a double whammy this quarter. Its enterprise business went off the rails. After Hertz, which had ordered 100,000 Teslas, decided to shed 20,000, a third of the ones that had already taken delivery. Why? Well, they were too costly to repair. There were plenty of repairs given that people, I mean, people didn't really know how to drive them. I know Tesla stock rallied today. Yay. And that makes sense. It's an acolyte stock, a false idol worshipped by growth managers who can't seem to resist but don't really understand anything I'm talking about. As I see it, someone who wants a Tesla would be willing to buy a used one from a dealer who's helping Hertz unload their excess. But right now, these are a bust at the enterprise level, and they need price cuts to sell more. And they're not getting them. They're not cutting prices like I think they should. Compare Tesla's clients to those of, the t- of tomorrow's standout string of earnings. Let's go through them. Microsoft sells the enterprise. I expect them to have a terrific quarter. Companies buy their stuff. Companies use their AI. Individuals are small potatoes for Microsoft. AMD, enterprise. What's making AMD stock rally so powerfully are its advanced chips that rival NVIDIA's for use in artificial intelligence. AMD has a considerable consumer group, but they don't sell to the consumer. They sell to PC makers like HP or Dell. Now, you might think that Alphabet's consumer, and you would be wrong. The client is the advertiser, and advertisers see Google as one of the few places where they can reach shoppers without paying through the nose to do so. But Starbucks, for the moment, that's the consumer. Because the consumer's strapped in China, and because many Americans in many, so I should say some Americans, in many cities have been scared away from Starbucks by these pro-Palestinian protesters who don't seem to realize that Starbucks has no real connection to Israel. 
If the numbers are weak, though, analysts will say, true or not, that the consumer can't afford a $5 coffee and is trading down and away from pricey coffee, which is why we've been telling members of the club, please wait till we see the whites of their eyes. Then we'll make a decision on whether to buy more because it's such a great brand. Or take Thursday, where you got Amazon, Meta, and Apple. You may think that Amazon's all about the consumer, but that's just not the case. Amazon's also about the advertisers and the many businesses that use Amazon Web Services. That's right, it's part consumer, but part big enterprise. Amazon Web Services helps enterprises that want to be in the cloud. You almost never use the cloud except for as a you know, backup for your photos. Companies use the cloud all the time to better serve you. Meta platforms. Again, you probably think, hey, wait a second, you're the client. And that's true if you're buying their VR headsets. But it's not true if you're using Instagram or Facebook. In that case, you're the product. The clients are advertisers trying to reach you in a soft, unobtrusive way. Meta is exactly how I'd like to reach people because it's so targeted as to almost guarantee a good return. But Apple? Consumer. It has very little enterprise exposure, which means it can be vulnerable to the same weakness as Tesla. That's why people are so fearful of a huge guide down. Guide down. Uh, slashing for the next quarter, not this one when Apple reports. I'm worried that the bears will get a hold of the release and trash the heck out of it, talking about how a cash-strapped Chinese consumer isn't buying the new phone, while the Vision Pro headsets are too pricey and too unaffordable. Still, I say own Apple, don't trade it. You have to go through this morass every quarter. Now, let's circle back to what I said at the top. Yes, you can argue that this market's way too narrow. I come right back at you and say it's only as narrow as the customer. Right now, businesses are shockingly flush, having refinanced when rates were low, and many are racking up record profits. They aren't burdened by student loans or sky-high inflation or expensive rentals. Companies don't go to the supermarket. They don't pay auto or home insurance. They don't go to the hospital. They are, yes, indeed, flush, while the consumer is indeed cash-strapped. If you're a business, who do you want to sell to? If you're an investor, what company shares do you want to buy in? Bottom line, it's not about tech versus everything else. Stop that. Get that out of your head. We have a market made up of companies that sell into the enterprise, and those stocks are doing fabulously. Then we have even more companies who serve the consumer which is a much less attractive customer base right now. And their stocks, they're very tough to own. Lucas in Rhode Island, Lucas! Jim, thank you for taking my call. I'm an investment club member. Um, I'm a little scatterbrained at this point. I'm 32 years old, so I'd like to think I'm long on time. You but, are. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm wondering about Navitas at this moment. Uh, I know it's a little expensive compared to some peers, but I'm looking at future trends, not the current ones. I uh, know, and it does time. have quantum computing, but it's losing a lot of money. Here's my take. If you, wa- if you want to look at future trends, you have to look at current trends. And current trends are for companies like, yes, NVIDIA. They'll figure it out. Jim in California. Jim. Mr. Kramer, thank you for taking my call. I'm of interested course. in your thoughts on the golf stock that has been a swing and a miss for me as of recently. Top Golf, Callaway, MODG. With the stock down 30% of the last six months, I'm beginning to worry this is a COVID double bogey and the new clubs that people bought during the pandemic are just collecting dust in the garage. What are your thoughts? You know, I'm not a good call on this one because I think it should be a good stock. Now you can say, well, listen, Jim, you know, don't make your judgment now. Take a long-term view. But I thought it would have moved by now. All that said, I, I'm sticking by it. But again, there are other people obviously more right than I am who uh, would suggest that it's not a good buy. How about we go to Lamont in Tennessee? Lamont. Jim, hey, I need you in Nashville. It's hot chicken week, and this is my second invitation to you. <laughs> you know, I hear you, and uh, my wife's probably going to go there before I am because I'm tethered to the desk. Break, can you get the, get rid of that? Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> All right, hey, I um, am diversified in my investments, a couple hundred thousand in some uh, indexes. But I have 48000 of mad money that I put into Mercado Libra with a seven-year uh, play on it. What do you think about that? I, I think it's an amazing of- company. Now, first of all, I, I, I'm going to go to Nashville, your invitation. I don't know exactly where I'm going to hang out. But I will tell you this. Mercado Libra, I was an original investor in this company, and I could not believe when I had the managed team how great these guys are. And, you know, I've never un- – I had to sell my stock. can't own stocks. But I have never wavered in my belief that Mercado Libra is really more of an Amazon than it is an eBay of Latin America, and it is a must-own. The market is not about tech versus everything else. It's about the enterprise, which is doing fabulously versus the consumer. This is it. 
Oh man, let me tell you, super microcomputer is proving to be super investment. It's up nearly 75% in the last month, and this thing is flying after the close. I'm going to get the latest on the story from the company's top brass, fresh off the earnings. Then speculative investors are shorting grains. Ooh, that could be a risky move. I'll plant some seeds for home gamers when we go off the charts. And the sports world has gone digital with a host of big streaming deals from Netflix to Apple. And with NASCAR getting the action, I'm learning more about the changing landscape with NASCAR president Steve Phelps. What a story. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.